What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Erica, from the Classy Climb blog. If you don't know who I am and you're watching this channel, I'm the author of the Smartphone Millionaire book, How to Invest in People, Real Estate, and Businesses from the Palm of Your Hand. You can grab us on Amazon. There will be a volume two coming soon. And it might even be on infomercials. Don't know. Big stuff happening right now. I'm going to put on the anti-glare glasses because it's a little bit bright out here. Um, what's up, you guys? I had to do this video. Why you can't retire early. Because saving is not investing. And I'm meeting more and more people who said, but I saved. And I'm like, how much did you save? 30 grand. How old are you? 55. You still got a mortgage. You still got a car payment. Like you can't retire. There is no retirement here for you. And people really get upset because I get it. I get it. But while you're here, drop your city and state. We've got a lot of things I want to update you guys on. And here we go. So look, many of you know we have some events planned in August 3rd through 4th. I'm inviting you guys to Austin, Texas, my beautiful city. I want you to come here. We're going to have a boat party uh, on Sunday, 11 to 3. We're going to pick you guys up from the host hotel, get you over to the marina, get on the boat. About, I think, 65, 70 people. We're going to have a great time. It's a party bar, W Decker boat, music, food. It is what it is. I have the link for the tickets up here. Some of you already bought it. Some of you are already on the email list. So, you know, that went out to y'all first. Um, and then I have a 10 person midday intensive. It's supposed to be me and Charles. I think Charles got his day off. I'm going to double check with Charles' schedule. But essentially, it's going to be in L.A. during the same day. So July 9th, there's two options. If you're going to see me July 9th and at nighttime, 630, you know, that's kind of like we're going to be at Shaquille's. It's going to be loud. We're kind of just mingling and having a good time. If you're like, Erica, I need to talk to you. We need to work out my year. We need to work out my investments. Then the midday intensive is the best option for you. So that's July 9th. It's only going to be 10 people. We're going to be in a great space, workspace. And trust me, bring your laptop, bring your pen and paper. We're going to get down. We're going to find out what you need funding wise, where you're trying to invest, investing out of state. That's what Charles will talk about more on. I'll be talking about trucking, investment groups, whatever your questions, we're going to break them down from 11 o'clock to 4 p.m. And I'll have lunch there. So that's part of the cost. Um, and it's so important. So the bank book is called the one page business plan. As many times as I've said it, it's I'm saying one more time. The one page business plan is the bank book. It's the same thing. Um, I just keep calling it the fancier name, uh, but it's in there. <clears throat> so part of why am I doing this? I realized to actually touch base with a lot of people in your cities, I'm going to have to do a combination of events and a combination of meetups. It's going to have to be a combination because at the end of the day, there's a lot of places where there's a lot of you guys who are buying things and selling and buying books. So I'm going to go to closer to you as much as possible. Uh, and I'll also be doing VidCon that week. Now, July 13th, if you are in Chicago, we're working out the rest of the details. But me and Rashana Scott are doing a bus tour slash a meetup that day. So we're going to have the tickets out as soon as possible. I'll probably by the end of the week, I'll be able to give you those tickets for Chicago. And it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. So uh, that'll be in Chicago. Uh, then, of course, you know, before June goes out at the end of the month, I'll be in Baltimore, June 29th. I'll be in Baltimore. I'll be at Charm City Buyers event. Uh, Isha Selden will be there. She's a millionaire. She owns mad properties in Philly. Like if you don't come for me or anybody else, you should come hear what she has to say. She has some really great opinions on things. Um, and then so next next spot, uh, August. I already told you August 3rd through 4th boat tour. I think on the calendar literally is behind me. <laughs> The next big ones I think we're planning is Denver, Denver and Las Vegas. Phoenix somehow got pushed off of July because there's a co-person I'm doing an event with and they said they cannot do July. So uh, Phoenix might be into August, which is still going to be hot, but we'll be there. So that's the, the deal right there. OK, let me see. So I, what did I want to go through? Saving is not investing. So I'm going to make sure I share my screen. So you guys, brace yourself. I'm going to share my screen tonight. And I have somewhere to go. So I'm not going to be here all night. But I definitely want to. I haven't talked to you guys in a while. I've been on this sabbatical. And, you know, kind of held hostage here because I had to do lots of work while I've been on the sabbatical somewhat. So uh, make sure you drop your city and stay in. Help me out here. And I'm supposed to be sharing my screen, but it might not be doing it. I might have too many things open. Uh-oh. Let's see if it happens. Well, it's still on me. So let me just read your comments while we wait. All right. 
We have hello from Charlotte. Hello from Los Angeles, home of the the homeless people. Wow. Yep, yeah, I see that. Um, West Palm Beach, Florida. Hey, Staten Island. Greenville, South Carolina by way of Memphis, New Orleans, Houston is here, Dallas, Texas, Sacramento, California, Chicago, Illinois, Sacktown, is it still rough up there? What's Sacktown? Chicago? Uh, are you talking about Sacramento? Oh, Sacramento. Hey, Erica, I clicked on your link for courses. I didn't see the bank book. It's called the One Page Business Plan. That's why. it's. I just keep calling it bank book because that's the original name I want to use for it. But, you know, it is what it is. I realized I was like, that name not going to work. So I got excited. Anyway, let's see. Thank you, Shauna. Metro Detroit, inflation will eat up those savings. Facts. Um, 10 4. Okay. I don't know. I moved here for school. I'm not familiar with the town. Oh, Sacramento. Okay. When are you coming to New York? I really like New York's a great city for people who like it. I'm just not. It's not in the plans. It's just really not in the plans anywhere soon. So I would strongly encourage you to come to where we are having events. But if not, hey, you know, definitely catch me here on the internet. Alabama and Dallas, Texas by way of Queens and New York. Big Zoe. Jeannie from New York. What's up? Okay, NYC. All right, it's 73 of y'all here. Hit the like button. I don't know if my computer's even going to let me share the screen with y'all tonight. It may not. It may not happen. Now, y'all know how this computer can be. It be tripping with me sometimes. But let's see if I can close out some other stuff. Maybe that'll help it when you got 27 things open. All right. Um, you guys still here? Did I lose you? Okay, I think you are. So anyway, I was getting ready to show you some stuff, but we'll let the computer do what it's going to do. All right. Um, long story short, there was a link where it said savings is not investments. And I think a lot of times people get confused and say, well, I saved money, Erica. I have savings. And I, and I hear it all the time, especially from engineers here in Austin. Well, I've got a million in savings. And I'm thinking, but that but that's not investing, right? Because if the stock market takes a tumble, then you got half. Instead of a million, you got half a mil, right? Uh, there's a reason they keep saying savings is not investing. People are confusing the two. Savings help the bank. And a lot of times people get frustrated when I say that, but it's just true. Savings help the bank. They, savings help banks loan more money. Now, you may say, well, Erica, what about China? China has a ton of savings. Savings is great when you have a plan for savings, when you plan to invest in businesses, when you plan to invest on different things. But savings for the sake of savings, you're talking about dead money that's just sitting in your account being dead money. Now, what do I mean by that? <sighs> I have a hilarious thumbnail use, but again, it's, it's talking about overvaluing your work. A lot of people are like, Stephen Curry, he can win this thing, this series. And I was like, didn't we just say the same thing about LeBron couldn't do it by himself? Keyword, you cannot retire just off one job, one income. You have to have investments, period. Like, like I get it. Some people didn't get the same education as others. They're like, well, Erica, no one told me. Uh-oh, my screen's acting funny. I don't know if it's going to cut off. No one explained to me what I needed for um as an adult to retire or any of these things. And I get it. I get it. Someone did not properly give you the information and that's okay, but we can work on that. Okay. We can work on that because as long as you understand that, yes, you need to make more money. This is just period one. You need to make more money. That's great. But if you don't invest that money, you make the more you make, the more your lifestyle creep is going to go up. Period. I'm talking to the phone all the time. People 50 to 70 years old who are like, oh, I'm ready to retire. I'm like, what do you have invested? Oh, I just have like 50,000 in savings or I just have this. And I go, what? I, and I really going to I really just there you go. I don't have time for that. Um, I really just want to pull them aside and say, listen, if you're 55 to 70 years old and you got a small house or a house you've paid off and you got a car you paid off then really all you're fighting is all you're fighting at that point is property taxes and management fees, maintenance fees. Now, what are maintenance fees? Um, your house, your light bill, um, guard, keeping stuff up, not keeping, you know, keeping things up is the big deal. And unfortunately, a lot of people get stuck in this mode. Well, I'm ready to retire, Erica. And I go, but you're you don't have any savings. Not only do you not have any savings, you don't have any investments. You don't have anything paying you. Anything. They don't. That's what I'm saying. You're saying pension, but people don't even have pensions. What's up, Charles? Charles, I just finished telling them that we're having an event on uh, July 9th. July 9th. It's a twofer. 
July 9th in the nighttime, you'll be over, we'll be at your kills. And during the midday, we call it the midday intensive. It'll be 10 people. Um, they get to break out and talk about investing, investing out of state, trucks, funding, whatever you're thinking of. That midday intensive is for you. And it's already sold, I think, two or three tickets. So whoever wants to get the last ones, that's the best to be in bed. In. Like grab those. Those are going to be your best bet to kind of talk. So. But here's another one. OK, so long story short, I'm talking to people and they talk about, oh, you know, I have a pension or Social Security. Social Security, on average, depending on your income levels and, and contribution, sometimes you're talking about $800 and other times you're talking about $3,000, $2,300. I don't know about you, but eight hundred to two hundred two thousand three hundred dollars is not enough to retire, even if you have everything paid off and you eat uh, chicken, beans and rice every month. It, it, it just isn't. And the only people when people say pensions, 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 I get it. Y'all really want to talk about government pensions because people love working government jobs. The only people who are government pensions that are really serious are usually GS workers or military folks. Like my mom makes over six figures a year, right at six figures a year from her government pension. But she also did what, 26 years and also has a government disability. That's it. I mean, those are the only people, few people who are really making big money off pensions or living well. And even those folks need to invest. I'm running into people who have military retirement, but they, when they retired out the military, they got $7,000 monthly income bills Bills coming in every month, but they only got three thousand dollars coming in from their military retirement. So that means what? You're going to have to work. And so I think you guys are, you know, I just want to make it very clear, like savings is not investments. It's just not. And unfortunately, my computer is not going to cooperate with, with the lovely stuff I wanted to show you. all That is frustrating. Hold on. Let me see if I can exit out of this thing. Because if it's not going to show it, then ain't no point of it being up on the screen. Oh, wow. Uh, let's see if it'll close. Yo, this is so crazy. Can you guys see me or hear me? Can you guys see me or hear me? I'm back. I'm back. All right, everybody. Can you see me or hear me? Am I here? Am I back? I think I'm back. Okay. Well, that was weird. So my computer was like deciding it was it was going to die. It was just going to die. I don't know why it's tripping lately, but it has been tripping a lot lately. So let me quickly go through this before I go to the movies with my friend. Okay. Everybody put a one in the comments and I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Okay. Let me hurry up and share this while I can, because clearly this computer is like, I'm sick of you. And I don't want to go Mac, you guys. I really don't, but I might have to. All right. So, okay. This, just to give you what I was going to give you the rundown. Okay. All right. So this is the Classy Climb Texas Summer Boat Event. Okay. And the best of it, this is the actual party barge will be going on. This is called the Stars and Stripes. We have noodles. We'll have, there's a bathroom. Thank God there's a bathroom on board. There's a be food and drink on board. Um, and this literally, I, I'm calling up all my friends. Andre Hatchett will be there. Kier from Trump City Buyers will be there. Terry, Asia Dennison will be there. Um, of Dennison Construction out of Detroit. 
uh, whoever else wants to come, come through. Um, and long story short, August 4th on Sunday, 11 to 3, we'll be on the party barge to mingle, talk. It'll be fun as I don't know what. Um, August, that's August 4th, sorry. August 3rd, 7 to 10 p.m., we're going to do have a VIP dinner, three hour plus conversation at a location to close in the coming week. You know, just for our safety, we'll disclose it a little bit later. <clears throat> Uh, essentially, you can find this on Eventbrite, but essentially, this is what the boat looks like. It's going to be a ton of fun, and it's just hundred dollar tickets, so that you know you come, you get good food and drink. And a lot of times, many of my Texas people keep saying, "Oh, you never do anything in Austin, Texas. You never do anything in Houston, Texas. This is your great time to come. If you want to come for a day to Austin and hang out, this is your time to come and ask questions for real. Like this is one of the best times to come and have a great time." Um, we're going to have a blast. We're going to dance to the wobble. We're going to dance to some other stuff. And we're going to ask great questions because if you got Andre Hatchet on a boat, I'm hoping Money Madu will come out. We'll see what his schedule looks like. And a couple other people, you can talk to just about anybody, right? You're going to have a good time. Okay. So this is one of them. Okay. So if you're in Houston, Texas, Dallas, Texas, you're in Texas, period, I might have Tim Jackson. I might have a couple other people. As, as my friends confirm their hotel stays and whatnot, this is going to be lit. Plus the VIP dinner, you get to sit with us and talk. It's going to be pretty lit. Food's provided for, you'll like it. So uh, this is one of these people, if you want to come to Austin for a day or so, this is a great time to do it. August 3rd through 4th. All right, here's what I was talking about with me and Charles Ogilvy. This is in Los Angeles. Um, it's I'm calling it the Midday Mastermind. Uh, I You see it right here. It's 11 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. We'll have a working lunch. Take a little bit of break, you know, coffee, working lunch, but Again, this is going to be a solid four and a half hours or so of discussion, problem solving, funding questions surrounding real estate, trucking industry, um, investing out of state. Bring your laptops, your pen and paper. We're going to make great strides, get you on track. When you leave here, 90 days, you ought to have some kind of game plan. All right. It's going to be downtown L.A. I'll release it to the people who are buying. We are not on Skid Row. Let me zoom that in as much as possible. <laughs> we are not near the homeless. OK, we're near the <laughs> We're near like 55th Street or something like that. <laughs> I'm like, that's scaring me. But we're near 55th Street or whatever. But look, bring your questions. This is how it really goes down. When we talk about what are we doing at a lot of our mastermind events, we're getting a small group of people together. We break it down and talk. We chat it out. We see what, you know, what are the moves in your department, in your city, in your state. And that's how we get things done, honestly. All right. So. Something that's been on my mind. Look, I'm going to show y'all where Texas is cooling off economy wise. But while we're at it, let me show you this. OK, so there's two things I've been posted on here. It's money is trash and savings is not investing. I think I need to play it. Let me make sure it plays loud for y'all to hear it because, you know, y'all, we always have problems. But just push a one in the comments if you can hear it. People call saving investing. It's not. The nomenclature alone is not right. There are plenty of people who think they have a bank CD, that they are invested. And we explain to them they're not. Investing is a long-term proposition. There are various ways to do it. There's risk attached to it. And the risk is typically commensurate with the return, etc. Even in financial literacy classes in some schools, high schools and colleges, I believe schools don't have financial literacy. We might take corporate finance or something like that. But I know plenty of people who've gone to Ivy League schools that don't graduate any more literate financially than anyone else. But when they do have these literacy classes, they talk about such perfunctory things. In high school, they talk about how to write a check, how to read, read a utility bill, all of these things, not about the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ, not about the foreign markets, not about the things that are actually, what is growth versus value? What is Morningstar? The things that actually are going to shape the decisions you make about your financial future in terms of choices you make People call saving investing. It's not. The nomenclature alone is not right. There are plenty of people who think they have a bank CD, that they are invested. And we explain to them they're not. Investing is a long-term proposition. There are various ways to do it. There's risk attached to it. And the risk is typically commensurate with the return, etc. Even in financial literacy classes in some schools, high schools and colleges, Ivy League schools don't have financial literacy. We might take corporate financial. Okay, I think y'all heard it. So I don't have to play it 50 times. But do y'all understand when she says saving is not investing growth versus value? Um, I'm going to be bringing Terry back on um, for a couple, you know, stock Wednesdays. And uh, I'm going to also bring on if Todd Millie has time, if Charles Ogilvy and a couple other stock people have time, just to kind of like 
again, saving is not investing. Like Morningstar is a prime example of stuff people don't even know about. Morningstar actually will tell you about different companies. Um, it'll actually tell you if different nonprofits are legit, all that stuff, right? So again, saving is not investing. Now, here's another one. This one's controversial, but again, y'all know how Uncle GB. So brace yourself. Again, if you can hear these, always put a one in the comments. It helps me let me know if I'm playing it loud enough. You're having to confront economics every day. Economics is the consistent factor on this planet, all right? You should look up two words before you leave here today. One, you should look up the word economics. Economics is defined as management of the household. How many of you looked at your finances this morning? Be honest. How many of you looked at every account you had this morning? Let me see hands. I look at my finances every day. Every morning, I look at my finances. I want to confront management of the household. I am in charge of the money in my household. 1000 US dollars for anybody that knows why I look at my cash accounts every day. No, not because I can track it. No, not so I can 10 exit, so I can get rid of it. I don't want money. Money is trash. Money is garbage. Okay, help me out here. Cash is king. That's what you were told. You know who told you that? The banks told you that. Cash flow is king. Cash flow is king. Say it again, man. Cash flow is king. Cash flow is king. You, you're having to confront economics every day. Economics is the consistent factor on this planet, all right? You should look up two words before you leave here today. One, you should look up the word economics. Economics is defined as management of the household. How many of you looked at your finances this morning? Be honest, how many of you looked at every account you had this morning? Let me see hands. I look at my finances every day. Every morning I look at my finances. I wanna confront management of the Now, why am I showing y'all that? I talk to people almost every day and guess what? I'll ask them, do you know what's in your account right now? Do you know how much money you have right now? Do you know it's what's in your account? And they will look me dead in the face and go, no, they don't know. They don't know what's in their account. They don't know when their bills come out. Yeah, I know it's looping on purpose. I'm doing it for people who, who may have missed a part. They may, it's for people who may have missed a part. Uh, don't worry, you're gonna be okay. <laughs> so the reason I'm doing that is because it's so important. Like every day I get up, I keep telling you all the routine I do here in this business. In both my businesses, I literally get up, I check the business accounts, I link the QuickBooks for the accountants. And so when I go there and I want to argue about something, I know what's in there. I know exactly what's in there. I know the numbers. I know the amounts. There's just no way you're going to get over on me, right? And a lot of you, when I talk to you, you won't look at your accounts because, you know, you overspent or, you know, something's going on. You know, whatever your choice is, you don't want to look at it. But this is how you win every day. When you're a business owner, if you look at your accounts, you realize, okay, we need to do A, B, and C amount of sales this week. You know, that's how you win. That's how you stay on top of it. Okay, you don't have to do everything, but that's how you stay on top of it. Now, why am I showing you this picture? Again, in this picture, uh, Annette was there at the event, but we had over fifty million dollars. When we start talking, he was like, "Do y'all realize that we had over fifty million dollars in this room?" Andre Hatchet was there, but he already went outside, got the car, y'all. He didn't even make the group picture, man. But in the what we were trying to say is we could start our own opportunity fund literally in this room there are several people who are millionaires in that room there are several people who are in trucking in this room i'm not going to point them out i'm gonna see if i get to hang out back with them up north but they were they were in trucking uh, i'm gonna reach out to them this week too i gotta like um i have a stack of cards from this event and i gotta reach out to everybody i was being lazy but i was also on sabbatical um but that's the thing it's like what people don't understand is it's not that it's lonely at the top. It's just that when y'all get together like this, y'all need to grab everybody's card that's in this room and stay connected with them. Even if you just email them once a quarter, once a month, hey, just touching base, talking to you, seeing what you're doing in your city or state. Because what happens is, y'all don't understand, people, it, if you want to reach out and you want to connect, this is this is how you do it. Again, um, this is the last one I'll show and then I'll get off Instagram. Hey, man, if you got a million dollars, you're basically just a freaking deadbeat million dollars if you didn't have any more income and you were how old are you? 27 years old and you didn't have any income a million dollars no income zero income you're 27 years old i'm gonna do this at 47 i'm gonna do it at uh, at, at, at 65 okay 27 you don't have any more income how long would that money last you'd have to live on four thousand dollars a month for 25 years, you will be 52 years old, my friend, and dead broke. 
And I, and, and I started with zero, just so you guys know. I didn't have anything. Number one thing you got to do is this. You got to change the target, and you need to look at the target daily. Okay, so look, it's simple. Target, what's your new target? Freedom. Yeah, freedom. But 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 let's put my, uh, a number on it. So your first target should be $10 million and nothing short of that, right? So then, And hey, man, if you got $10 million... All right, million, All right. so that that's, again, on my Instagram, a shorter clips, different stuff. Um but the reason I showed y'all that is because I keep I keep trying to tell y'all it's saving is not investing. I'm bring the camera back on me for a minute. Saving is not investing. And people will sit here and argue with me. Well, I've got saving again. If you see. If you see a million dollars like and, and this and this is why I'm not trying to say this doesn't happen. There's just right now, I got on the phone this past week and we were talking about people we knew who got a million dollars and blew it. People who inherited $50,000 and it was gone. Like I literally have talked to several people who, there was a woman back in uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina. She got hit by the bread truck in Fayetteville. I know this sounds crazy, but she did. And then once she got hit by the truck, they took her to Cape Fear Valley Hospital. This isn't slander. This is a legit story. You can look this up in the newspaper. When they got there, they messed up on somewhere in her in her stomach and intestines. So not only did the hospital have to pay her, the bread truck company had to pay her. She ended up having a million dollars, 1.3 or something to that effect. Within 10 months, it was gone, y'all. All she had was a Mercedes, an apartment, and a bunch of clothes for her and her children. Now, it doesn't help the woman was off and on, having drug problems sometimes, having issues. But she literally, I mean, people in the community were like, I would have pulled her aside created her just about any kind of business she wanted she could at least have bought a house cash and had money stack stacked up for the taxes now people say erica you know that's rare no it's not you literally can go through legal documents and see like there's a company and i didn't put it in the smartphone linear book because they were like oh you don't need to put that in there don't put it in there but there are companies where you can actually loan the money like you know a company's gonna have to pay out a settlement and you loan the person who won the settlement their million dollars in advance but that whatever if let's say that the people when they win the lawsuit they win two million dollars well because you loan them that first million you're entitled to the whole two million it's like jg weren't worth own drugs and people do it every day so you'll see these big rig accidents right that's one of my big fears is when the truck driver will hit somebody and something happened but 84 percent of the accidents that involve big rig trucks are not the trucker's fault it's the person in the car's fault so there's million dollar settlements that go out way more than y'all think. But the problem is if you started out struggling paycheck to paycheck, what are you going to do with your check when you get it? You're going to blow through it so fast. Well, I'm going to go on these vacations. I'm going to get me some nice clothes. I always wanted these clothes. I'm going to get the pickup truck I always wanted. It comes out of habits. The habit you have is where you're going to do it. And you don't become an expert unless you're doing things consistently. The reason I completely just shut down almost all things and just hammered out every day these trucking to get these trucks on loop is because there's so many of them. One and two, I didn't want to be one of those guys that had one or two trucks. My dentist has a truck that's in the oil fields. He don't even care about it. It probably could make more money for him. He don't even care about it. I did not want to be that type of investor. I don't want to be like, yeah, we got trucks, but I don't know what's going on. I want to know. I want to know what's going on. I don't want to buy ripping me off. I want to know the cost of things. I'd be like, print me out a whole invoice. If you repaired something, I need to see it. I need to see it, right? So all that to say, a lot more people get money than you think, but they blow through it quickly. I mean, I remember that story in New York. The guy had got, was it half a million dollars? I think he got half a million dollars and the bank begged him. No, it was close to a million. The bank repeatedly said, please don't do this, sir. Please, we give me my money. Give me my money. I just want my money in suitcases. And you know how long it takes you to get a million dollars from the bank? Days, if not a week or two. He got the money, goes to a hotel, calls up an escort service for three girls to come to the hotel. And guess what? In New York, they come rob him. He didn't even have the common sense to go to a good hotel, a, a luxury hotel. And, and I mean, it's one of those things. It's one of those things. So um, these things happen way more than you thought, they think. And what I see happening in the second part of this video, I'm going to show you all for our kind of wrap it up is people are moving to a new city to escape problems, but they get to the new city with the same mindset. Right. Or they're frustrated because they have to work so hard in their new city. What I'm seeing here in Austin, Texas, I meet so many people who there are two things are happening. They either get married. <laughs> and this is why I'm telling you this is so funny. It, 
So when I first moved here five, six years ago, there was like 250, 300 people in these singles groups, right? And then I would go to meetups all the time, five days a week when I first moved here, because that's what you do when you move to a new city. Well, then what I noticed is, okay, a lot of those people got married. Okay, no problem, no problem, good. But then when I looked up, a lot of people that moved here, they moved away or they moved back home. It was the same thing when I worked in apartment industry. I'd be in the apartments and someone would move here from Kentucky, Louisiana, wherever. And you know what they'd say a year later? Man, I could, I could, yeah, I made more money, but I also spent more money. I spent a lot of time in traffic. I'm going back home. And this is what's going to happen in this next recession. Now, you're going to see all these people leave New York. You're going to see all these people leave California. But what you're going to understand is people are living together in a house to survive. Like, if you don't make good moves, money moves, I'm telling you that you will not retire. So many people call me talking about they want to retire and they're 55 and I go, how much do you have saved? Nothing. 30K, 40K, almost nothing. And I tell them it would be better for them to take their 30K, buy a rental property and do it again every year for the next 10 years. Now, people say, well, Erica, you know, apartments are the way to go. People going to live in apartments. I live in a luxury apartment and it's transient. Now, what do I mean is transient? Everybody that lives in the apartment, I, this is what I've seen in the almost almost a year and a half I've been here. So many people come here, got a Honda, a little Camry. I talk to them, I'm like, oh man, that's, you know, cute kid, whatever the conversation is, dogs, whatever. Oh, I'm waiting on my house to be built. I'm moving, waiting on my house to be built, moving. They're moving to a house. This is a luxury place, but you still can hear noise between the rooms and the apartments. It's too much. You're sharing walls. So then as I look in the apartment complex, the only people here still left that ain't going nowhere, that never talk about moving anywhere or always complaining, have Mercedes Benz, BMWs, Mar I'm talking about top of the line, Mercedes, big, big emblem Mercedes. And I've talked to a couple of them, one or two dudes, this dude with this giant truck, a $70,000 Ford Raptor. He's like, yeah, I got to get a house because, you know, I'm tired of doing Amazon FBA out of my apartment. And I'm like, you got a luxury apartment to do Amazon FBA out of it? You should have rented a house. Um, there's a girl here who does YouTube. She's some kind of camera type girl. I'm not certain. She's pretty though. Um, but I'm telling you, you guys have to be focused because what they've done is they got to the top of their money in these luxury apartments and they're building another luxury room beside us from beside us after that. And they got the top of the line car, Mercedes, BMW, all that stuff. And they're trying to be trapped. There's no way they're going to be able to afford to get a house. And people say, well, what if the economy falls or there's a recession? not in Texas. What's happening is people in the nowhere parts of Texas have moved into the cities to get work. So there's a lot of parts of Texas I've showed you guys on this channel that are going red where people are just leaving. They're just leaving. They're like, this part of bung nowhere Texas is boring. I'm leaving. Well, they come here to Dallas, Austin and do what? Buy a house or they, you know what I mean? They just moving money around. But if you look at the trends, all the people, and I'm being careful here. I'm in Austin and I'll be careful. I'm going to show y'all an article if it's up here about Atlanta. And this is the same thing that's happening in Austin. The black people who live here and the Hispanic people who are from here. Now, the Hispanic people, they are paying attention enough that, hey, we used to have all these plazas over here and they used to be in Spanish. Not anymore. Let's move to Round Rock and buy up this other plaza and buy up these other houses and take over this area because this area is no longer us. I see it all the time. The black people have progressively moved to Pflugerville, Round Rock. I mean, the numbers are like 15, 20 percent of the demographic. So that's why when black people tell me, oh, I never see black women at the gym. I'm like, I can go five different times of the daytime over here in Round Rock, Pflugerville and see black women, black men every day of the day at the gym every day, all day, every day. And that's how I know people making it up. If you live in Houston and the demographic is 30 percent and I live here in Austin where it's six percent and I'm seeing black people every day, you're a liar. That's just my two cents right on that. But what's happening is they're moving to where it's affordable, but they're not buying houses. So I'm seeing a lot of black people with BMWs and Mercedes. And I'm like, you better buy you a house because when when Apple gets here in two years, they're already projecting the neighborhood that Apple's across from. The house is there now. They went from 285 to 350. Now they're going for 400,000. Same damn houses. Only difference is Apple's building a building across the street and some of their people are already coming here. That's the only difference. That's the only difference. And when I see places that are like empty, I see brand new apartments that are empty. I'm like, don't worry. 
what's going to happen is the people that are living in the boonies are going to come in. People from California are going to come in. These apartments are not worried about this. But I'm telling you, people, no one wants to live in an apartment by choice. Their first choice is a house, even if they're renting it. Just space for their kids in the backyard, space for their stuff, stuff to store their crap. I'm telling you, it's a difference. So I'm going to share. Thank you, uh, Roasting Gibbs, Roy Gibbs, for the $4 from chat. I really appreciate that. There's 150 of y'all here. Thank you for coming out so late. Um, I'm going to the movies here shortly, but I want to show y'all all this stuff. Again, I know you come in. Different people are coming in and out of the chat. Don't worry. I'm going to share the screen again. Hold on a second. I got to put my cowboy boots on so I can get on. <laughs> but I don't wear shoes in my house. So anyway, um, again, if you guys are coming in late, Classy Climb Texas Summer Event. It's in the links. Also, the Los Angeles meetup is in the links. All right. Texas hot economy expected to cool. Now, that whole talk I just gave y'all about Texas, because you have 293 people moving to Dallas a day. You got you used to have 500 a day moving to Houston. Then. Um, and then you have 157 moving to Austin a day. Where are those people coming from? They're coming from a lot of places. But when they do come. Of course, this is, you know, it's talking about different cities here. It's talking about hot markets. First hot market, of course, is, um, you know, Texas. Again, it's it's basically doing a slideshow of other places. Texas unemployment rate dips to four percent. Houston makes up 25 percent of the state's jobs. Houston economy is also expected to slow as Hurricane Harvey induced businesses activity fades. Now, what does that mean? When I was here um, and I was before I was getting my house built. <clears throat> before I was getting my house built last year, because I thought about buying this other area, they were like, oh, my God. Hurricane Harvey. I was like, okay, what's that got to do with us? We're living in Austin. That didn't hit us. They're like, every single Hispanic guy and guy with a small contractor company, before we saw our paying company, has took off to the coast because Hurricane Harvey hit what? 11 counties? Not just Houston, but 11 counties, okay? Um, and it, when it hit these 11 counties, I mean, some of them it absolutely devastated, some it didn't. And so you had all these people leave and work down there. You also have people coming from other states, leave, cut, leave their state, their home state to come work. So again, I mean, this is just, this is a, this was a big thing, but where are those people going to go when it starts to slow down? You know, honestly, some of the Hispanic population are going to stay in Houston because of ice and the threats from ice, of course, but okay. So number two, New Orleans, New Orleans. Now, Louisiana um, is lower score because of, you know, innovation potential and all this other good stuff but again these are you got to check these out mississippi of course is, is on the low alaska because people are leaving alaska left and right that cold wears you out also oil is not booming booming like it used to in the 80s and that's what started all those people living there like when i lived there you know they were like watch out for the weird dudes weird men that work in the oil you know a little kid um west virginia again these are places that are are on the list at the bottom, 47 is Arkansas, Maine, South Dakota. They're way down on these lists. Oklahoma, Hawaii, Hawaii's too expensive. New Mexico, why is New Mexico? New Mexico is leaving people. I don't know, what's the deal? Um, Kentucky has been losing people. Maybe y'all can tell me. Wyoming's been losing people, just age of the population's old. Kansas, losing people, but should be gaining people. Um, and I think it's, they should be gaining people because people should be moved for other places. But thank you, Overflow and Overprizes, for the $5 super chat. Thank you for supporting the channel. Um, this is Alabama. You know, Alabama has issues. Iowa issues. Iowa is getting an influx of people from California, though. Nebraska, Illinois, you know, people leaving there left and right. Montana, North Dakota. Ooh, these are Rhode Island, Ohio. Ohio's losing people left and right. Connecticut. Missouri, let's see, South Carolina. Now, South Carolina, the best thing that's happening from South Carolina, honestly, is the tour tourism. That's all they have, really. And two, older people are moving there. So now the healthcare industry needs them to pick up, pretty much. Pretty much is what's happening in South Carolina. Every time I go, it's like they're making money off tourism, and that's it. Um, Wisconsin, Tennessee. Tennessee had a combination of Nashville boomed like... Um, 
Nashville boomed like Austin. Nashville boomed like Charlotte. I mean, companies pretty much spread themselves between Nashville, Charlotte, Marietta, Georgia, and Austin. Okay, Vermont. They pay, Vermont is paying people ten thousand dollars to move there. To move there, there's a problem. Okay, going down. Um, Pens Pennsylvania people people really can't afford to stay in Philly, but they there's a lot of flipping in Philly. Indiana, Indiana's been losing people. New Jersey. Okay. New Jersey's been bleeding people. Florida, I think it's an age thing more than it's that. Nevada, Nevada's gaining people. If nothing else, it's gaining people from um surprise, Virginia's at 19. Hmm. Anyway, economic health is a 10, total score is a 50. But New York, people are leaving. Minnesota, I'm not surprised by the ranking at all. Delaware, not at all. Maryland, New Hampshire, Arizona. North Carolina's number 12. I do be up high. Like, so as I'm going down, it's states that are doing better. So this is this, these are states that are doing better. So let's start from here. We were at New Hampshire. Okay, Maryland is at 15 because it's doing better, apparently. I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> but New Hampshire, Arizona, Arizona's doing well. Why? Because of Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona, and the fact that they gained 300,000 people from California. That's the only reason they're up on this list this high. Uh, number 12 is North Carolina. We're gaining, thousand, I think, 5,000 companies. I mean, again, I'm right now trying to buy a, a place in Charlotte, North Carolina, and Raleigh, North Carolina, to Airbnb and other things because, you know, I want to keep a foothold in my state, my home state. Michigan, I think the combination of the billions of dollars they're dumping in Detroit right now and the fact that you have some of these companies moving to uh, Great Lakes or what other place there is in Michigan, that's what's happening. Okay, Texas is number 10, right? You thought Texas was going to be number one, didn't you? But Texas is number 10. Why? Because, you know, it's going to cool. We're cooling. And at the end of the day, the, the what happens is if somebody sells all their stuff and they move here from California and they buy a house and they buy furniture and they buy a new car, that's it. Most of the time they're going to sit still and be chill after that. Okay, so number nine is Georgia. What's, look at that. Why they got y'all doing y'all like that, Georgia? Why they got to do Georgia like that? At least let the brother have some braids. Um, this is Georgia. You, you, you think about it. Economic activity is five. Economic health is a 12. Um, overscore score is pretty high, but that's because a lot of people are leaving New York to go to Georgia. That's all that is. Okay. Um, this is, and tech companies. Oregon is up there, but Oregon has like cost of living is bananas right now. All right. Next one is Idaho. Idaho. Why is Idaho getting people, y'all? because it's right beside California. So a company that doesn't want to move to Texas, but wants to move a state over to get a break from all the ridiculous taxes California keeps putting, they'll go to Idaho. All right, Washington, DC. Again, government jobs, GS jobs, Colorado, marijuana, tech companies, people getting out of California. It's just the cold California, that's what it is. Number four is California. Now why is California still up here? California still makes money. People still move here. Chinese people still buy everything here, buy homes, buy houses. People still invest in California. I'm not, I'm just saying the trend for people, if you're not in tech and you're not owning something or a business in California, you're leaving. You just can't afford to stay, but it's up here high on the numbers only because it's California, the size of it. Massachusetts, I don't know how it's recovering or what it's doing there. I really have to do some research, honestly, because I keep seeing uh, Massachusetts pushed up on the list and I'm like, what's going on there? Anybody from there? Somebody tell me unless it's just people leaving um, New York. OK, number two is Utah. Why? Businesses are moving to Utah from California. Number one, of course, is Washington. And they are I mean, they get number one, but the cost of living is bananas. So I just had to show you all that. Um, and, it, you know, the next slide is, you know, same thing. Texas high market expected to cool. Um, and I've been telling people this, this has been out for about six months, you know, uh, feel better, Louisiana, text. <laughs> now, why are Louisiana making articles? Because unlike Texas, Louisiana employment dipped to 4%, you know, it, it, in comparison, people only go to Louisiana to work and leave and vacation, you know, like it's not doing well as well as people say it is. Okay. Same thing more. Texas economy rebounds in the first quarter. Again, I, I'm not trying to burst the bubble of Texas, but what I'm trying to get y'all to see is people move here 
and they sell everything to get here. And when they do that, oh, no, we don't got an ad popping up. Get out of here. Um, when they do that, that's it. They spent their while. Now, what I've learned, a lot of people when I see them here in Texas, is it's the first time their wife has been able to stay home with the kids. It's the first time that she ain't got to work all these jobs. It's the first time, you know, he is just the breadwinner. And that, and usually what I've seen people do is they'll get, um, what they'll do is they'll get the house first. And then they'll like, then she quits her job. So I've seen a lot of that too. Um, a lot of my friends in, in real estate, they'll be like the wife be so ready to quit. Like they just ready for the paperwork to go through. So again, it, it's just, again, I just want to take some of the air out of the bubble that is Texas because people think, oh, I'm going to leave to Texas if something goes wrong. No, if you're an expert, stay where you are. <laughs> Texas economy growth moves decidedly into the third year. Okay. Okay, 32,000 jobs in August. Now, when they say somewhere added 32,000 jobs, people are like, that's great. But 32,000 jobs when you probably got like 100,000 kids graduating in Texas alone. It's great if only the men want to go to work and the women stay home. But again, Texas global role in trade and healthcare reported gains in trade, transportation and utilities, 8,700 jobs and education and healthcare created 5,000 jobs. Now, what does that mean? I see trucks, trucks everywhere, truck, 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 trucks everywhere. I see transportation companies everywhere. I see like it'll be in the middle of the nowhere field and I'll be like, oh, I wonder what's going on over there. And in the middle of that field, what they'll have is a small little fence and a few trucks sitting in the lot and they'll be like, we're a transportation company. And I'm like, but are you? Sorry, drink a little bit of water. OK, but it comes out of that again. So again, I just want to, it's the same echo, but again, this is something I'm keep hearing. This is what I brought up earlier about Austin. In a diverse metro Atlanta, why are less than a quarter of the homes black owned? Only one in, only six U.S. cities have lower percentage of black owned home ownership. Why? Why in Atlanta do people, because people want to live in nice downtown Atlanta, but their income says they can live in the suburbs. That's just what it is. That's just what it is. Birmingham has great stuff. Hoover, Alabama is great. Vestavia Hills is great. I'm actually, let me see if I can show y'all. Um, I'm going with a group who are going, basically looking for looking for houses in Atlanta and looking for properties in Huntsville, Alabama. And they're going to Birmingham. So I might actually end up doing something in Huntsville, Alabama, but I might only go with them to the Birmingham part of the tour. We'll see. Let me see if I can pull it up. But the reason I want y'all to see this is this is a choice. When you live here in Atlanta, you can get a house. And what I, from what I talked to a lot of people, they're saying the houses are so far out. Like they don't want to live so far out. I get that. I get that. I really do. Um, more than one third of, met of Metro Atlanta's 5.7 million, million population is black. 33% to be is that. But less than 25% of them own a house. That means roughly 1.28 million owner occupied housing in the units region. Only 300,000 black people own a house. I mean, let's, that ought to be a show in itself, okay? Um, the only metro cities with lower percentage black owner homeownership were Detroit, which is crazy to me, Virginia Beach, Baltimore, Milwaukee. I'm still shocked Milwaukee has so many black people. And New Orleans and Memphis. That's it. That's it. I love how it says the city too busy to hate. Okay, Atlanta. All right, but it says the median black household families in Atlanta is 47,000. The median income household for Atlanta, Sandy Springs, Roswell metro area where Glenn, Glenn and Cameron live is 65,000. That's no small gap. That That's a big price range. So I just want to see y'all, show y'all some of this stuff. Any other questions y'all got, bring them, bring them for me. And, and the reason I keep trying to say saving, this whole thing about Saving is not investing. It's because I'm just meeting so many people who are like, oh, I'm ready to retire. Like, are you? What? Like, so anyways, <clears throat> let me see you take this camera off. Any questions, y'all? Definitely bring your questions. I don't want you scared to say, scared to bring your questions. I'll see if there's anything else I wanted to show y'all. Let's see. Did I miss anything? All right. <laughs> oh, this is some of y'all questions. Okay. 
Vermont paying people to live there? Yes, they're paying ten thousand uh, dollars. Look it up to move to Vermont. Montgomery military jobs, and if you make less than thirteen, we have a Hyundai factory and supplies. Yeah, interesting. Nevada game me. Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona here. Arizona is nice, but hot and drier than California. Okay. Georgia, ATZ, and Chattanooga, not far away. That's true. Uh, Overflow in Enterprises got customers that are coming from California, New York, and they don't mind paying reasonable money for good services. Yes, that's true. I have lived in Cali, very fun, but only tech and rich. That's the facts. Montgomery on the way up, building new townhouses downtown. You talking about Montgomery, Alabama? Okay, making sure. I heard a lot of new tech is being developed in Massachusetts. Ah, good to know. Massachusetts unemployment is high. Cost of living outside of Boston is reasonable. Okay. If you get a mid-high level income, a lot of real estate investing too. Houston, Texas, what's up? Beham, this has been on 10 years. But if you're a passive turn car, yeah. I heard Birmingham and Huntsville are good for investing, but like a diamond in a rough area. Hmm. I'm going where I can find a job, a tech job, hoping Texas, Georgia, DMV, or NC. Yeah, those are all great choices, honestly. But what I tell people is you're gonna move somewhere, what you have to understand is you have to invest two years. Like I had two people I know they were talking about moving to North Carolina so they can find more girls. I'm like, you're in Austin, Texas, where college is, where all these women are, and you can't find girls. It really isn't about the girls, it's not about you. But, you know, change is good for people. People need change. Kadira. <laughs> Hobbs, what's up? I see you live for once, what's up? Sandy Springs, it's obvious out there. Oh, for sure, like when I went for the Wing Festival, I was like, oh, okay. I'm so late. What's up, Jodine in Orlando, Florida? A lot of people in Memphis actually live in houses for rent. Yeah. It's plenty tech jobs in DMV. Yep. Yeah, it is economically depressed. ATL is good for investing. Just have to know where to invest. It really is. Cost of living in Memphis is 30% less than national average, but I also had a ton of crime at one point. Am I right or am I wrong? If I'm wrong, correct me, but Anyway, that's that's the show today. Um, I wasn't going to be on here long. Um, right now, we're just uh, working on the trucks. We're basically closing on a property in Detroit. I'm um, going to get a new roof put on it. And then I'm looking for this property in Houston. And I thought I had a property in Florida, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But there's a lot of opportunity opening up this year, and I'm excited. So if you come on the boat party, that's basically it's a celebration of you know, Grandview Investments and also you know, just a great opportunity for you guys to come see Texas and enjoy it. So I, I hope you would enjoy it. But you got to have the mindset, you guys. It, it, it doesn't matter if you realize that the only way you're going to retire if you're 55 to 70 is if you have a paid off house, paid off car. And even if you have those two paid off and no other debt, like just credit card debt or something, you still are going to need some money to, to maintain your, your living, any medical bills, any prescriptions. Like that's just how it's going to be. And so it's better if we wake up to that new reality, right? Like if we already say, okay, this is this is how it's gonna be. And this is why I, I keep showing that book called The Frugal Bill, Frugal Woods, um, because it's showing people moving out further out. There are several YouTubers right now. If you look at them, they have moved out. Like there's one dude in Oregon. He moved out to a 30 acre farm. Like he's just right out of the city, but he moved out to a 30 acre farm. And I was like, you know what that's about? That's just saving money. It's saving money. Can't afford to stay in the big city. Saving money. That's what it is. So, oh no, let me see. Oh, also, what was funny is I brought up today that Matt, the guy that's really famous for minimalism, he's been married for eight months. He finally just said, oh, yeah, we've been married for eight months. We got married at a chapel and, and we're now we're moving. Now, I said in my comment in the community space, um, the reason you're seeing this is you can only do minimalism for so long. And minimalism truly is, it, it is about less crap cluttering your house, which is important. But ultimately, minimalism is for you. For most people, they're broke, period. They're broke and they can't be out here splurging. And so when they do splurge, it has to be very particular things, like particular unique pieces of clothing. For me, it's cowboy boots. Um, that's a big you know, splurge for me. I get myself new books, um, you know, uh, 
you know, new cowboy boots or I get new items to go with my motorcycle. That's my one splurge was my little motorcycle. It, and what's happening is in this whole minimalism, it's just less clutter, but also people are broker. And so they can't really afford to <laughs> to live crazy. And I've, I've gone to people's houses for events and dinners and it's literally like barren in that bug. And I was like, is it barren by choice or because they have to? They don't have any money. But what's funny is Matt, I put it in the community section, but Matt basically been married for eight months and it's time for a new place. Because guess what? When you get eventually a lot of these millennials will what? Get married, buy a house, get out of these apartments and want to live well. It just is what it is. It's, it's an American mindset. And I made in the comment, too. I wasn't throwing any shade, but if his girl is from Australia, he's from New Jersey. They live in California. They're doing what a lot of people I see in Texas do. They can't afford for all the family to come here. They just can't afford for all the family to come here. So they have a small, intimate event. They have a small, intimate event, or or they only bring out a few of the close family friends at a small place here in Texas, and they get married and get done with it. I mean, that's that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm either going to have to go back to North Carolina where all my family is, or because all my friends here in Texas, I'll just have a small event and have to fly my own family out. It's costly. So I know why he did it. I know why they got married in a small chapel, because in order to fly all her family out from Australia and fly his family out from New Jersey to California so their friends and all can be at one place, it's crazy. Minimalism is really right now just people making making an explanation for why they don't have a lot of stuff at their house. It is calming. I will not lie to you. When I my other apartment had less stuff in it, I was like, oh, this is relaxing. I just come in and lay down. So, But at the end of the day, it's like <laughs> you will have to spend some money. So this is Meet the Frugal Woods. Now, the reason I bring this book up so much is I was watching an interview and if I can find it, I'll share it. But essentially, the frugal the frugal movement, you know, you see a lot of these modern farmhouses where they built a, you know, a beautiful modern farmhouse out somewhere. And that's my goal, honestly, is a modern farmhouse. Eventually, not, you know, my house I'm moving here is nice, but I'm going to build a modern farmhouse because it's reminiscent of that time. It's reminiscent of when you could have a big house and all these kids and like Chip and Joanna Gaines with these four and five kids. Like people are going to go to that. Now, people that think, oh, Erica, that's crazy. People aren't having a lot of kids anymore. But there's article after article. And I see it with my own eyes where people who are in tech, people who are doing well for themselves are having four or five kids. But they also are living further out. If you come here to Austin, I would love to give you a tour of Georgetown, Texas, where they have these giant houses out here that are probably a solid 30 minutes up the road from Dale. And these Indian families will be all up in these houses. And these wives will stay home and enjoy these places because they're doing this model. Frugal Woods, getting out of the city, out of it. So let me read the last of this and then I gotta go to the movies, you guys, I'm be late. Oh, thank you, David Murray for the $5 super chat. <clears throat> Erica finally caught you live, listen to you and appreciate what you do. Thank you for supporting the channel. Curtis Davis, if you make 100K now, you need to make 250K in the 70s. In your 70s or like when you're 70 years old, I get what you're saying. Uh, first time hearing you, I had to get up to speed. Thank you, Alicia Thomas. I agree. Extreme minimalism seems like extreme dieting. It's not realistic for long term. Yeah. And people just get things right. Like you, you get tired of wearing the same clothes. Now, I remember this guy. He is a very good looking guy, but he was always working out in the gym and he just wore simple black shirts and blue jeans and it worked for him and button up shirts. He didn't have a lot of stuff, but that's what he ended up buying. And it looked great. It worked for him. Mr. Mitchell, I don't think about it. Um, will cannabis, out of your whole question, what I will answer is, will cannabis be the new tobacco? Yes, I've, I'll probably do another cannabis video if Courtney will come on later this week or next week. And we'll talk about cannabis because what it is, is basically a cash crop. It's a cash crop like corn and you know, the markets are going to get crazy about it because it's just a way for America to make some money. Um, but America's trying to figure out what to do with all the people they locked up in the process. Right. So Seattle, Washington, what they've done is if you went to jail, I think it's Seattle or it's Portland at the double check. If you've been in jail the past six years for weed, you got out and you got it got expunged off your record. That's life changing. But imagine if you have to do that in multiple cities. So that's a whole nother show. I will not even lie to you. Um, I don't care for cryptocurrency uh, money. May 5 is going to come in and kind of debate me a little bit on cryptocurrency again. But for right now, my problem is people are skipping over to cryptocurrency without having any kind of base of any financial foundation. That's my problem.
So David Murray, San Antonio, Texas here. Love what you do. Well, thank you, David Murray. I really appreciate that. San Antonio, what's good? If you got any deals in San Antonio, let me know. No. <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, trucks are not going to be autonomous for another 20 years. What are your thoughts on getting drone licenses to fly drone? Do it. I mean, right now, I can't name my friend, but it's somebody I, you guys have seen me talk to um, here on the Internet. He essentially sold some drone footage for literally, literally like a thousand dollars for something he filmed in another state. And the, the Department of Tourism for that state bought it from him. So, again, have your ducks in a row. <laughs> Oh, acres like Chip and Joe. I mean, and then this is this is what I'm talking about. Like as people leave those Texas country areas, other people move in like here in the hill country. It's very popular for people to buy, um, you know, these ranch houses, you know, out out there. And because that's what people do. If you got like four or five kids and your husband works in tech and sometimes can work from home, they're doing that. So. All right. So well, no worries about it. you can't get a super chat to work. There's always other times, but. You guys, it's your girl Erica from the Classy Clown Blog. I got to run to go see the Dark Phoenix. No spoilers, you guys. Hopefully, it'll be good. Uh, you guys, thank you for coming out. Thank you for supporting the channel. And I hope to see you at the boat party or in LA uh, with me and Charles Ogilvy. Or, gosh, there's like a ton of other places I will be this year. But we'll always keep it up to date. Thank you so much.